Hi everyone, so today I want to share something new with you coming out of Spellbinders. It's these new watercolor floral stamps. Um, these were sent free of charge from my review and all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box are affiliate links, which may as well make a small commission if you were to purchase items through those links. Um, again, photopolymer stamp, it's uh, by Sh Sushma Hegdi, I want to say. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, this is called Field of Flowers. And um, what I love about this one is that you can just stamp this and just do a little water coloring and it's going to look gorgeous. Put your sentiment on there and you're done. Very easy. Um, it's a nice size stamp. Let me see. I believe it's uh, five across here. Let me. Yeah, it's about five inches tall. And at the deepest point, it's almost three inches. Uh, five inches, sorry, wide and three inches tall. So it just makes a really nice focal point for your card. Now, that's going to be very simple, very easy. You're probably going to be done in just a couple of minutes if you were to do something like that. Just a, a nice basic card, like what we're seeing here. Lovely. But what I want to do today, it might be a little more challenging and hopefully it works out because in my mind I think it will. Um, you know, we have the stamp of the month, uh, which is just adorable for March, and we have these little bunnies. And then the large die of the month, I have it here, has that mechanism that makes things move. So I thought, why don't we try to put the little sweet bunnies that do have a lot of the same feel, you know, like, oh, the little field of flowers, the little bunnies, and see if we can get them to move and pair it up in that way. Um, so I'm going to grab some paper and hopefully uh, this will work out for us. I will be right so back. A couple things I need to think about as I'm designing this. So I have a piece of paper. Again, we're going to have the little pull tabs. So, you know, wherever you want to place it, but I am going to orient my paper this way. Um, it needs to be on the side. So I'm going to make this card base, even though I usually like to mat a smaller mat into my cards. This is five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's the full size of what a standard A2 size card would be. Um, I do want to get a scrap of paper. Hopefully I have one here. This might work, just so I don't stamp onto my uh, my uh, mat here and have to clean that up. Um, well, so I'm going to stamp on this first, but I do have to think about whenever you do the mechanism and you have the little thing just to cover it up, and it actually looks really clean. I don't even think you have to actually cover it up like we did with the grass in the um, last video. I probably should have had it here for an example for you. But... Um, what I'm going to do is think about where the flowers need to be, where the bunnies might be, and then I'm going to use the same flowers to cover the front area here too. So I'm kind of thinking about how that needs to look or how high I need to stamp. So I think I'm going to put the bunnies in there, and this is going to come up pretty high for the background piece. And I kind of want them to look different than just stamped here and then stamped again um, on the piece that's going to cover it up. So what I'm going to do is grab this guy. <clears throat> And if I stamp it up a little bit higher, this other piece is going to go on top of that a little bit higher too. Yeah, so I'm going to stamp it pretty high up, at least an inch and a half from the, from the bottom or so. Yeah, something like that. And I want to give it some variation, like I said. So what I'm going to do is ink this up. Again, photopolymer stamp, first time I used it, so sometimes it has a little bit of a sticky residue on it, like a dispersion layer, but I'm just going to tap, 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 make sure this is all inked up. Actually, I didn't have to ink up this whole other edge. What I'm going to do is put this over here, again, a little bit higher up. And I'll show you why I'm doing that, just so it looks like it's a different background than what's going to be in the foreground. Otherwise, I would just stamp the whole thing right in the middle, and again, you can make a nice card that way. Just making sure I'm getting everything lovely. See this? So now I'm going to ink it up again, basically on this side. And also, since this stamp is five inches wide, but my paper is five and a half, this is going to give me a chance to take up the whole paper. And I'm just going to eyeball this where it might join up with what was there before and just stamp that. So hopefully you see I'm picking up where I left off here. Lovely, and look at that. It looks like a scene, but it's different from what was on the stamp here. And over here, um, I just have some extra piece. This is the piece I'm gonna use at the base here and I don't need the whole whole thing. 
but most of it. So I'm still going to stamp a pretty good amount of this. And this taller area, I really want it to be over here. That's fine. Okay, so let me ink this up. Sorry, my little one woke up and she said, Mommy. <laughs> so let me get this going here. And this is okay for this one. I just wanted to look different from the one that's in the background. So what I'm going to do is put this here. Again, I'm probably going to cut this down in different ways because I don't need all of it. But I am stamping off the bottom edge here. And then I'll do the same as I did before. I'll just pick this up, ink up, and stamp the rest on this side, and I'll be right back. So, so this is going to be the part that's going to go on top. Um, I don't need this whole top part because I'm going to trim it down. So I'm going to go ahead and just stamp my bunnies on here too, again with the same uh, ink, because if I decide to use water or if I use, decide to use alcohol ink markers, it doesn't matter. And I think I'm going to use this tall guy. And we're going to fussy cut these guys so you can put them wherever you want. <clears throat> there and there. So I'll just stamp these guys down and I'll be right back. Yeah, those stamped beautifully. Just boop. Sometimes I think we press down on our stamps too hard and you really don't need that. You just need a nice press and up and you're good to go. Um, what I've noticed if you're using a thicker st uh, ink and you're holding it a long time, a, long a lot of times it just wants to come back up with the stamp because it like dried on the stamp, you know? So I think we, we do a little too much sometimes. Okay, so I have some of my uh, watercolors here. I have the uh, Jane Davenport Neutral Palette and I have my Brights, of course. I had pulled this one out originally because that's what I was gonna use, but I need something more toned down for the little rabbits. So um, I'm just gonna take this and just put in some color. So I'm gonna use a very, very fine water brush. I think I need to find even a finer one than this. And you know, I'm gonna pick up some of the green and just add some green here and there, what I think looks like leaves. You know, just dab, 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 and then I'll come through. There's not a lot of leaves in this front one because of the way I cut the paper. Or stamped, should I say. Okay, and then wipe that away, and then maybe some pink. Some of these flowers. Again, I always start wherever the shadow should be, and then bring the watercolor up to the rest of the area, so it's deeper in some areas and then less in others. Same thing for this other one. I'm going to completely, you know, color it in. That one's kind of similar to the other flower I just did. And you can add color, take it away with watercolor. You know, you just add a little bit more liquid and you're good to go. Um, I am going to try to fill in this bottom area, though, with green, just so that it looks more like it's filled in. I'll do the same thing on this one. Get a little water here. Something like that, just to kind of fill in that that area. Okay, and then I'll continue coloring my little flowers just to have a little more greenery in there. Same thing for this guy. So again, just dab, 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 a little bit of color. These, a lot of it's gonna be covered, in, covered up, so we're just gonna come in here. Okay, I'll keep doing the same thing, adding the greenery where it needs to be. You wanna make something look dry, you can definitely color some in, looking a little dry, however you want. And then our little bunnies, I got the neutral palette because I'm just going to do a little something. So I have gray here. It's called Dove. And just, whoop, let me get, take a little bit of that off. I'm just going to follow the very contours of my little bunny, bringing that color in a little bit. Very faint, very small amount of color I'm adding here. And it's going to be that quick, guys. Let me put some in there. Remove a little bit of that. And if you want to give him a little, a little cheek, I'll just take that off and kind of fill in the pink in his little ear. A little pink in his little nose. 
and that's about that. So that's what I'll do. Same thing with this little guy. I'll add just like some brown tones just to make him a little bit different color and I'll be right back. Okay, so once these are super dry, again, this is our card base, so I'm not doing anything with that quite yet. So I'm going to let that dry. If you want to add some blue skies in here, of course, you can definitely do that. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Just adding some blue with some water. Not too complicated. And then I'm going to fussy cut a couple of things here. Sorry, I had a bunch of things on top of where I need to get. So we are going to cut out our little rabbits. And what I'm going to do is just make it easy. Start off by cutting this whole thing out. So I can just trim around them very easily. You can leave a little white space or not, however you want to do it. But whenever we fussy cut, I always say put pressure with your dominant hand and use your non-dominant hand to move the paper and you'll get a nicer cut. So instead of going around and being chop, chop, choppy, you know, chop, 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 you just apply the pressure and then let the other come around here. Okay, and I'll cut all around this little guy. Same thing for this little guy. And then here I am going to do as well as I can. I'm not going to get into every nook and cranny, but, you know, try to remove as much of the white space as you as you can. That makes you, makes it easy. Okay. So I'll do that, and I might even clean it up after I do this, because a lot of times I'll come back in and still kind of, you know, remove a little bit more, just depending on what happens when I'm done here. Okay, and I'll keep doing that. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, I am so excited. Just seeing these pieces, I'm like, this is gonna work so well. Um, so we have our little guys. I made this one a little brown, a little pink here, and then this little dude. And we're gonna have both of them here facing each other and that's pretty much why I picked these out because they face each other and the sentiment in the um, stamp set is we are better together I think that's so sweet so that works out really really well um, okay so we have our card base we have our little guys they're gonna go behind this some spot so I grabbed the piece that cuts out two now if you really wanted to so obviously these two are already set up it's the way it is right that's the spacing what it does. You also have these little pieces right here and you can set them up differently. These cut one slot at a time. So if you want to put one over here and maybe one over here and have two different pull tabs, one on this side, one on this side, however you want to set it up. I'm just going to make it a little bit easier just using the one piece and then go with that. Um, so we do need to cut the holes for that. I'll talk about that in just a minute. I don't know if I'm going to need two or three of these little straps, so probably just two, but I'll cut out a few just to have them. This is the piece that keeps your mechanism in place. This is the actual mechanism that pulls it. So I'm going to need two of these. Cut all these things from sturdy paper just so that, you know, you have um, a better go of it there. And so this one, I'm going to cut actually from this gold paper because I thought that would be really fun. The gold paper is thick anyway. And then the back part of it, because you want to cut two of them just and glue them together, I'm just going to cut from the same white paper that I'm going to use on everything else, which is just a heavy stamping card, which is what I used here. I didn't use watercolor paper on this, but if you want to, you know, go ahead. And then we need two of these guys. This is the piece that, you can pop these little pieces out. This is the piece that holds your little guys, right? So we're gonna need two of these. Um, so I will cut those out again from some sturdy paper and I'll be right back. Okay, our next step would be to glue these two together. We're not gonna need all of this. So if you wanna trim it now or trim it afterwards, however you wanna do that, but we just need the first two little guys. So we can just trim that off. Okay, and maybe you can use that for something else, but I doubt it. <laughs> Alright, there's that. And we'll just glue these two together. And then we're going to decide where we want um, our little guys to be and cut all that out and get it all assembled really easy. So with this one, let me grab some uh, mini brads real quick. And all we're going to do is just add the mini brads, um, add those braces to those brads. I'll use this little gold one. And we're going to put these together. Uh, you can put it behind there, in front of it, you know, however it is. I don't think it really matters, but in the image it looks like they're putting it behind. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to put our brads and attach these two. And I'll do the other one and let this set up for a little bit and I'll be right back. I'm kind of 
looking at my little guys. I have this here. Obviously, it's going to go on top. I'm just trying to see where I want them to be, where they look the best. You know, something like that, about right in there. So I'm going to take this guy, and that's going to basically dictate where they're going to actually be. But I just kind of want to eyeball what I'm doing here. And I think around here is good. Try to put it as straight as I can, just making sure when I put the little pull lever... It's going to be in here. Maybe bring it down just a little bit. And then we need a, the pull lever needs to be like in this area. So I just want to see where I'm at as far as this too. Okay, I'm going to tape this down <laughs> nice and straight, not crooked the way it is right now. Let's see here. Something like that. I'm going to run this through and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm just going to pop that out for us. And then one other die I do need to bring out. I'll just eyeball this just for a second here. We're going to put this in here. And you're going to see pretty much where this is going to be at. You know, and then it'll tilt, tilt, tilt. But we want it to be straight. Up and down, get a little bit closer. Maybe about there. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to fetch this little guy. So basically that's where we want to be. At least that's where I am going to be. So I'm going to put this here. Tape it down. You know, just right about. There. Remove this. I'll run this through. And then we're also going to take that same little bite out of this edge. So all I'm going to do is just... Uh, once that's cut out, I'll layer this on here, just like I did in the first video, the review of the large die of the month for March. I'll take it out and kind of just lay it behind here. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to cut a card base, and I am going to notch it out of the card base the same way. I'll just keep, you know, moving it into the next layer, next layer, and cutting those layers out individually. Okay. I'll be right back. So, uh, for my card base, I decided to do it long ways like this. So, this is four and a quarter by the length of your card, you know, standard two sides, so it's 11 inches and scored at five and a half inches. And then I just took that little tab out of the bottom there. I probably should have lined this up first, but that's okay. And I only did it on the first one, actually. I was gonna punch it all the way through to the next one, but I think when someone receives it, when they go to look at a card, usually that front opens up anyway. So if, it, if you wanna take the notch out of the next side, go ahead. So it's gonna be something like this. So this is gonna be on here, and then this is gonna be popped up a little bit to give it that space for your little creatures to move. I know I did this completely different from when I did the large die review. I've seen spellbinders do it differently and other gals do it totally differently. So however it is that you want to assemble this to make it work for you, that's great. I know initially I put this down, you know, and did all that and then came through. I, I'm probably still going to do the same part as that. Um, I did it a little different though the steps is for me to get to this spot. But some people are going ahead and putting it through here first and sticking it down to here. Actually, now that I'm, I'll just show you a different way to do it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that here. I'm not trimming down my stick yet, uh, but basically when you do trim it down, you want it to be straight up and down. That's You don't want it to trim it down when they're like pushed over here or when they're like way over here because then you're gonna lose, when you go to push it back, you're gonna it's gonna be gotten your little um, piece that you can work with. So I was just trying to see what's going on here. And basically, that's where I want these little guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the straps on this side just because it's a little bit different from my, what I showed before and maybe there's something different you wanna see. So the last time I glued it to the card, uh, to the base. And when it wasn't a card base either, it was just another piece of paper. So uh, this time I wanna put it on a card. So again, we're gonna put glue on the very edges. There are little tab like notches where you're supposed to put the glue. And you do wanna follow that because what happens is that's gonna keep it straight for you. So if you're, not really quite on that. Also, let me think about what I want to do. I want to be able to push and pull it easily. So I'm going to hold this down. If I don't like this position, we'll just take it up, pick it up and do it again. But uh, you want to give yourself, and I don't think I mentioned that in the last video, the first one, now that I've done a few. Um, you want to give yourself some space so that you can push and come back. You know what I'm saying? See how they're here. I'm going to stop here. That's as much as it can go. But that's probably about as much as you're going to go anyway. So that's pretty good. 
So just make sure your little straps aren't impeding it going in one way or the other. So it's almost splitting the difference, but a little bit more on this other side. And then the second one. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold these just to make sure they dry in the right position. And I do test them after a few seconds just to make sure we're not gluing it down or that something happened there. I'm gonna put this one more over here because this one doesn't matter. I just need it to keep this straight. So I'm gonna keep it more on this side, not so close to this guy. Okay, and again, I'll test it and just make sure everything's good, but I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're almost there. And like I said, um, just make sure to test it and that it's moving how you want it to. That's pretty good. How cute is that? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'll put it straight up and down for now. The other thing we can do at this point is um, go ahead and put your uh, dimensional adhesive. So I'm just gonna take this roll, but if you wanna put little pieces, if you don't have it on a roll like I do, um, you know, just strategically place pieces so that it's nice and sturdy. So for this one, I'm just gonna go from here to here, clearing that area. And I know last time I built up the frame, I believe, on here, but this was strapped to the card base, so it's a little different uh, this time around. Of course, keep this away from your mechanism as far as it, its movement. Okay, and I'll just frame up the other side. That's easy enough, and I'll be right back. Taking all the stickiness, or the carrier, sorry, off the back, so now we have this sticky roll here. Again, I didn't trim it down yet, just because I want to make sure that everything is where I want it. Um, I don't want to end up <laughs> cutting this off too much and then not be able to open it up later. So this is exactly the size of this card base. So I want to be very careful. And remember last time I said, go ahead and remove a little bit of the carrier at a time. But this time, since I'm doing it in an opposite fashion, I'm just looking straight down. And hopefully we get it pretty close. And if it's not, you know, that's not too bad. Not too bad, guys. And I did put a piece in the center of the foam just to help us keep this card base nice and sturdy. And there we go. We still have our movement. Super cute. Again, like I said, I'll trim this down in just a minute. So we have our little guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. And then we're going to put this on top of here. So I just want to make sure where this is going to be and see about where I want to put the little little people. The other thing is when you glue them on, just make sure they're still gonna move. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So like this guy's up here, if I glue this too far down, he might move, but just make sure the way you glue it is not gonna impede anything. So I'm just gonna put some glue here and put him up straight. Right there, I think. Adorable. And like I said, just work one at a time just to make sure that where you glued him or how you glued him is still gonna <laughs> work. <laughs> how cute is that? Oh my gosh. All right, so hopefully you see that I put glue more towards the top than at the bottom because that way this this area can just be free to do what it's gonna do. But he's still on there real nice and sturdy. Same thing with this little guy and I might even cut down this a little bit. Okay, so I'm putting the glue more towards the top than anything. I left this bottom part kind of clear. And I don't know how close he needs to be to the other, or she. I'll probably send this to my husband, not to be honest. Uh, if you guys know about mm, me or my channel here, VNA, VNA Creates, that my husband's in the Marines and he just left for a year's long deployment, a little over a year long deployment. So this would be really cute to send to him. Okay, and look at that, look at that. Oh my gosh, you guys. I might just pass out. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay, so on this one, all I'm gonna do is frame it out. And basically on this bottom area, you don't want to uh, trap your little guys. So you're just making like an outer frame just around the edge, around this whole edge, and then just up this side. And I'll be right back. Guys, this is the last bit here. It's so cute. And I was going to put the sentiment across the front, but I think what I'll do is put it on the inside. That way the person, you know, whoever receives it, obviously it's going to be my husband in this case, uh, can have that. And then when they open it, it'll say we're better together. And I think that is so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, so hopefully you see what I did here to frame this out. Again, we kind of came up with this on our own. So using the the information from, you know, having put one together before, but just kind of coming up with our own numbers and where we want to place things. OMG. 
<laughs> All right, so thank you so much, Spellbinders. Look at them for sending these items for my review. I, I, I am, I, I don't even have words right now. <laughs> this is so cute. So again, when you go to trim this, you want to trim it when they're in the upright position, because that way you can still pull it this way and you can tuck it back in. But to be honest, I, I leave a little extra because leaving a little extra kind of helps you continue to play with it a little bit more, right? So if I'm gonna pull it this way and then when I tuck it back in. You know, it gives you a little more play on this side. So I leave it a little bit longer. And you can put it like that. So cute. Oh my gosh, you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll have, of course, the links to the new um, uh, wildflower watercolor sets here. Again, this is the Field of Flowers. Um, what I'm just going to do simply here is stamp this little guy. And if you have a gridded... Uh, stamping tool you should probably use that to help you out but again I was just gonna stamp this and then just put it on here or you can even like put it up here oops sorry but I think I'm just gonna stamp it on the inside so I'll stamp it with some brown ink just so it's still a little earthy like the front of the um, card and thanks for watching guys I'll see you at the next one bye now <laughs>